What's up everyone? So what do you do if you accidentally shoot a roll of 100 film at ISO 400? I, I wanted to just quit photography altogether and throw in the towel. Luckily that only lasted about five minutes. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what I did um, after I accidentally shot two rolls of T-Max 100 thinking they were T-Max 400. Now I could have titled this video, uh, Pushing T-Max 100 Two Stops, and I by all means do not have anything against pushing film. That's just not what I did. I just um, accidentally underexposed this. So what happened was I was packing and uh, overpacking film as I normally do, and I had this fleeting, brilliant idea to pack two rolls of T-Max 100 just in case I needed some fine grain, longer exposures. So what I did, I put two rolls of T-Max in with my, or I put two rolls of T-Max 100 in with my T-Max 400. Now, when I got to go out shooting, I had completely forgot that I did this. And so all the little um, yellow packets of T-Max looked the same. I had been driving for quite a while uh, I was still a little bit sick. I was out in the hot sun trying to recover from that uh, chest congestion and everything I had. So needless to say, I just totally forgot and then pile on top of that trying to film that video for, uh, in St. Louis uh, for YouTube. It puts a whole nother uh, level of distraction on what you're actually trying to do. So I went around and, and shot all the film I had, the Kodak film I had thinking it was T-Max 400, when in reality I had those two rolls of T-Max 100. So after I got done for the day, it was like as soon as I opened up my hotel room door, it hit me. And that thought of me packing that T-Max 100, it hit me and it hit me right in the gut. I went, no. And I didn't know yet. And then the feeling got worse when I looked at my exposed rolls and sure enough, here are two rolls of T-Max 100. And I knew it wasn't good because T-Max, I mean, T-Max 100, you're, you're typically not gonna want to underexpose and overdevelop. And on top of that, it was a very bright, sunny day. So these were not only underexposed, they were already really contrasty. I mean, af after initially feeling like, really like, oh, well, well, those shots are probably junk. I, you know, went to supper with my, or we went, to, we went out to dinner and I tried to not let it like all consume me and like ruin my night or anything. But it kept in the back of my head, I, I couldn't stop thinking about, well, what shots did I do that with? Because I had shot quite a few rolls of film and I had no idea which ones I actually shot the T-Max 100 on. So that was kind of annoying me in the back of my head for sure. So when, when uh, I got back after eating and everything, I started just looking up, you know, what do you, you know, can you push T-Max 100? Can you get more shadow detail out of it? You know, what does it look like if you push T-Max 100 to 400? And I started Googling all this stuff and it, it didn't look good. It didn't look good at all. I already kind of knew it probably wasn't good, but most people were saying like, good luck getting 100 or ISO 100 out of T-Max 100, much less 400. And what does T-Max 400 look like, or T-Max 100 look like? Um, pushed two stops and it was basically, it looks underexposed. <laughs> and so, yeah, I was getting a little bit more anxious and nervous. And I said, you know what, I just gotta, I gotta put this out of my head. We got a lot of traveling and things to do. And I, when I get back, I will deal with it. So when I finally got back to developing the film, um, I wanted to develop this stuff right away because I wanted, I wanted to see. So I think this was like the, the third and fourth roll of film from that sequence that I did. So I had to kind of look at my options. And the fact that these were um, important roles to me, like I know that most of the shots that I took, I was really excited about. So I didn't want to lose them altogether. So I started looking, okay, so what do I need to accomplish with these two roles and how I shot them? And the basis of it is I had to try to maximize the shadow detail um, because you can't really increase film speed. Um, shadow detail and film speed in a film with a specific developer is kind of set. But there are film developers that will maximize film speed and give you better film speed with film. So what I had to do was compensate the highlights while 
maximizing the film speed. And usually you can kind of do one or the other, but not both. So for to compensate the highlights, my options were use a more dilute developer, less or minimal agitation, no or nearly no agitation being stand agit or stand development or like a slimp development, uh, S-L-I-M-T, it's selective Latin image, image manipulation technique. And that's one where you kind of, uh, you pre-bath the film before you develop it in uh, potassium bleach. Um, and it bleaches uh, proportionally the highlights ahead of it. Um, I messed around with that in the past, the slimp, and I wasn't really willing to do like experiment with this film on it because I haven't done that in a while. Uh, but I did have interest in your results when I did it, so I might revisit that. So anyway, that's how those were kind of like the options I had available to me feeling somewhat comfortable um, trying. So at the same time, I had to maximize the film speed. And to do that, you basically you have a, a, I personally know of and have used a couple different options. Now, using like a phenidone based developer such as Ektol, and microfin and i say those two because those are the two that i had there are others out there um, that will give you uh, maximize your film speed and when i say maximize your film speed i'm trying to get like a third to a half stop more if i can to maximize the film speed the other thing you can do is increase development increase agitation increase temperature increase the activity level and that is basically how you push film but you end up getting like really contrasty film. And the problem I have here or with these negatives, it's already a really contrasty scene. I already, I'm shooting like full sun, really bright sunlit clouds. So I have to somehow mingle those two together is my thinking. So here's what I did. I was initially going to use microfin and I did a little bit more research. I have used microfin in the past, but I'm much more familiar with Ektol. And it didn't seem like there was a huge advantage to microfin over Ektol, like I said, the tube developers that I had. So I decided to just go with Ektol in the end. And what I did was I diluted it more than I normally would. So I used a dilute developer and then I didn't use full stand. Nothing wrong with stand development. I just, I, in the past, I've had problems with bromide drag like I said, these were fairly important negatives to me. So I didn't want to, you know, really compress everything down and then just to find that I had very uneven development and I didn't want to risk that. So again, nothing against stand development and people are probably going to shout at me, you stand, you stand. And I just like to make sure that the, the film is agitated anyway. So here is exactly what I did. I developed it in Ektol one to three, so using a more dilute developer over a longer period with less agitation should contain some of the highlights, but I still use intermittent or minimal agitation. There's different terms for that, but I'll explain exactly what I did. Um, and I use the agitation to try and boost the shadows more um, and keep the development very even. I don't mind dense negatives. I don't mind printing from dense negatives, but my main objective was to get shadow detail out of these without shooting those highlights just through the moon. So 46 minutes, Ektol one to three, 21 degrees Celsius, agitation the first minute, and then every five minutes after that. And how I came up with that exact uh, number and sequence was, I have used uh, minimal agitation or, or intermittent agitation where you kind of develop every three minutes and it gives some interesting compensating effects and some you can get some nice edge effects too. I'm typically not after that stuff and I typically want to develop my uh, negatives to as much contrast as I can get and still be able to manage any highlights I need to. That's usually my objective. So I'm usually not pulling film and only use compensating stuff uh, like in the video I did in Vegas if I if I really have to and feel it's going to be necessary. Otherwise, I generally want to get as much contrast out of my negatives as I can. So in an intermittent agitation, um, I always took a normal development and gave it 50% more and then just extended the agitations from one minute out to every three minutes. And that allows the film to sit a little bit more. 
it will still work on the shadow areas where it's thinner because it's not going to exhaust as fast because it doesn't have as much um, activity. But on the highlights, the developer is going to exhaust faster. And if you don't replenish that developer, it exhausts and it'll kind of sit there and the shadows should, in theory, develop, keep developing and the highlights will not. So I wanted to exaggerate that effect a little because like I said, this was really bright. So I went to every five minutes. And by doing that, I also gave it another 10%. So giving it another 10%, I initially gave the 18 minutes a total of another 60% for the agitation routine. Then I also needed to, in theory, like push or maximize the shadow detail. So if I was gonna push this, uh, push this film two stops, I would probably give it about 50% more development. So that brought me to 43 minutes of development time. And then to keep it simple, and to prioritize the shadow detail again, I just jumped it up to 46 minutes, one minute of agitation in the beginning and then five minutes thereafter. And that made it simple and I didn't have to think too much when I was actually in the dark room. So that's how I came up with it. But how did these negatives actually turn out? Well, dense, dense as and, but surprisingly nice and, and very manageable. And I was actually really very surprised once I started working with them more, because when I first looked at them, I was like, uh-oh. Not uh-oh, but I'm like, those are like bulletproof. Those look pretty dense. And however, I was very uh, pleasantly surprised to see shadow detail where I wanted it. And that was, like I said, in my whole thing, my main objective was let's get some shadow detail out. I can manage the highlights as best I can, like in printing and and I'll get into a little bit of that because I did do a, a couple test prints so far in the darkroom, but they did scan really, really well. But I will have to tell you, when I first looked at the negatives when they were drying, I went, okay, so what do I do? I, I'm gonna have to maybe mask these, um, you know, to bump the shadows up, reduce the contrast with some masks. Or, so I started like kicking through all the ideas because I'm like, this looks like it's gonna be, it could be a problem. So one of the things I, I, that clicked into my head was, I was like, you know, I wonder if there's any reducers that might help with, with this particular situation. And I did come across one. It's called, and this is in the Darkroom Cookbook. And I have not used this. I almost ordered the stuff to do it. I have not had to at this point. However, this Ed Eaters, E-D-E-R-S, Harmonizing Reducer. It is in page 300 of the third edition Darkroom Cookbook. And it, this reducer acts in a unique fashion, intensifying lighter densities and reducing the heavier densities. It is useful for correcting excessive contrast. So it's basically hydrochloric acid, potassium bicarbonate, alum, and water and you 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 bleach it and and it's a, it's a reducer but the the part that i found really interesting is that it intensifies the lighter density so it should intensify the shadows and reduce the heavier densities so i definitely i i haven't tried this out but i do have some negatives from these two rolls that i have like similar shots of that i definitely think i'm going to um, get this stuff um the chemicals mix it up and just see like the difference in what it does because that could be a very uh, useful tool. Like I said, I have not needed to use that for these negatives yet, but I, I just thought that was really interesting and I, I do want to give it a try and I'll, I'll try and make a video and, and see what it looks like. So like I said, I was pleasantly surprised to see shadow detail. So the negatives scanned really, really well, like far better than I thought they were gonna. Um, I can just show you a few of the scans real quick here. Okay, so here are some of the scans from those rolls. Now, they're definitely contrasty for sure, but I was really shocked with how well they scanned for how I shot, uh, how I shot them or underexposed them and then had to do this um, type of development with them. So they have tons of, of contrast in the lower end. Uh, a little less shadow detail than I would like, but they are definitely manageable. And I was I was really pretty pretty happy with the outcome. Um, this in particular is this image here. I was really shocked by the 
the, all the micro contrast in the arch and how good that looked. And then the scans brought the highlight down like immediately. Now, this negative in particular, I have been a little bit infatuated with, not infatuated, I've just been obsessing over in the darkroom. I've made some masks, done some other things to print them. I thought I was gonna have to make like highlight masks to kind of burn down the highlights, but let me just share some stuff with the actual darkroom prints. Yeah, so I metered pretty much, I walked up to the base of it as close as I could get, so my meter was filled here. And let me, let me go here. So it was right in this area, I kind of filled it. And from that point, what I did was, I just um, dropped it down one stop. So I underexposed that from what my meter reading was down one stop. So in zone system terms, I was basically putting those on zone four. And so that's if I had been shooting 400 speed film. Now that dropped down to zone two. So in theory, I dropped this down to zone two the way I exposed and shot this. And once I developed them how I did, the shadows ended up with a density of about anywhere from 0.33 to 0.4. And if you look at my, um, what, how I've tested TMAX in the past, and I don't have Ektol charted, but I do have it with HC110. And for my normal development, zone two is 0.32, and it goes in zone three is about 0.47 for me in negative density. Now, like I said, that area pretty much was about 0.36 to 0.4 for the most part in that area. So if I had placed those at zone two, it definitely bumped it up to zone two and a half to zone three. So I did get that half stop increase I was after. And on top of that, like over, like over, over developing like that, it really increased all the contrast because that's not a single tone there. It's very much got a lot of different tones in it. So it really brought out the micro contrast in the arch which I like in this picture. Now, the clouds, which the sun was directly behind here, directly behind the, the arch was the sun. So it is blasting these clouds. And these clouds on my densitometer um, measure anywhere from like 1.5 to the high parts, like in here, it was about 1.87, I believe. Yeah, 1.87. So that's floating in about zone 10, zone 12 range. Dense, but printable. So these are two test prints I've made. And one, I have not done anything with the clouds and one I did. And they're actually printed at a little different contrast. I did use a shadow contrast increase mask. And these are just prints I've kind of been living with. And I'm gonna go in and show you, once I actually get a final print of this made, exactly how I printed it, uh, particularly in the highlights, because in this negative, there's kind of like two areas I have to print again. And I, I think it's good to kind of think about printing or your scene in that regard, especially when you're taking the picture, to know kind of what you can do. And in this one here, um, I did just a simple flash uh, pre-flash on the clouds and then burn them down with a really low contrast filter and the highlights look the clouds are great to me i might have to like refine a few things and then yeah but i'm really liking where this is going and like i said i'm i haven't had time to get back in there yet so i've kind of just been living with it and and looking at it and see what i want to do from here but i have a lot of options and i'm happy with how these negatives are printing, even though they're probably more contrasty than you would typically like want to develop your negatives. So I guess what I'm trying to say with all of this is I'm, I'm really happy with the results. Like I couldn't be happier with what I did to what I got. Now, would I do it differently? I would probably, if, if I was gonna develop this film again and you know, like a knucklehead, I had two roles and I was like, I had so much film to develop. I'm like, I'm gonna go with this and see what happens. 
And if nothing else, it will be a learning experience in the dark room. Cause I, I know the highlights are gonna be the problem. Like that's gonna be the problem cause I have to get the shadow detail and I have to just contain the highlights as much as I can. Seeing the negatives afterwards, I probably would have stuck to a similar scheme, but I think what I would have done is gone with an even more, even more dilute developer about halfway through. So I think I would have developed for the first like 20 minutes or so with maybe even like a one to two Ekdal and done, did that every five minutes. And then about there, I would have dumped that and maybe gone to like a one to eight or minimum volume for the two rolls and how much I could get in there. I probably would have diluted as much as I could have with still keeping the developer active enough and then continuing that for the rest. And I think that might have brought down the highlights a little bit more, but still given me that same contrast. But all in all, I can't really, um, really can't complain too much with, with how they turned out. So a few more of these pictures. Um, this one, you know, again, it, this, this one I think I metered more just for the whole scene and therefore the shadows did dump even a little bit further. Um, you know, but I can't, I can't really complain too much with how the shadow detail did come up a little bit and I couldn't really expect it more than that and the highlights did get contained to a level where I feel confident I can print them and get good prints if I want to in the darkroom. Now would I go out and intentionally shoot film like T-Max 100 and push it to 400? No, I wouldn't do that. It It's not a film that's conducive to that. Um, there are better films if you want that look and to do that. But in this situation, it did kind of give me more insight into developing the shadows up a little and trying to constrain the highlights even though I think I could have done a better job. Like I said, like stand development might be a better route if you're willing to risk that unevenness and there are other things you could do, but I figured this might be interesting for someone that, you know, is trying to get a better grasp on, on how the development and, you know, with highlights and shadows works. So I was basically raising up the development by trying to keep the developer as active as I could through agitation um, and time, but still, bringing down the highlights through dilute developer and letting it sit for periods. So I really, really hope you found that useful and I hope it helps somebody. And you know, you, there's probably a lot of people out there that have different techniques that, that things that have worked. So let me know in the comments, you know, what's, what's the best, what's the best approach that you've taken, um, on reducing highlights, but still keeping that micro contrast in the contrast. Um, and my whole thing for this is to get really printable negatives. So keep that in mind as well. Um, I will make a video of me actually printing this negative. Cause like I said, I'm not, this negative is not coming out of my carrier until I'm happy with the print and I'm getting close and about to transfer it over to fiber-based paper. It's just, I have to find the time to get in there and, and wrap that up. So, so do subscribe and turn your notifications on so you can be informed when that video comes out and I will see you then.